because everyone deserves to see themselves like that because if you can be a superhero, you can be anything. I guess you could say it's a bit of a dream job. Oh, stop it. <laughs> Being able to even have a trans superhero at all just drives home the fact that one, trans is beautiful and powerful and capable, but you know, also that it's normal. I will never forget when Nia and you appeared and I was like, this is revolutionary. Like I could feel that it was a powerful moment. To be able to grow up and see yourself as a superhero is a really special thing that a lot of people don't understand how important that is because no one else has ever had to have a moment where they couldn't look at any superhero and be like, that's like me. So it's nice to kind of be able to, to give that for the community and selfishly for myself too. You know, now I get to see literally myself as a superhero, <laughs> which is like a that's whole nother level of crazy. It's a luxury to even frankly know another trans person. There's so many of us that grow up in places uh, that are rural or conservative and don't have that much of a community. And so being able to see yourself on TV is, and as, as a superhero, especially, that's the difference between that child being completely alone and having at least one other person being like, no, what you're going through is not weird or gross or freaky or bad. Being trans in no way, shape or form limits who you can be. I've seen the impact it's had on the trans community, but specifically trans youth. Like, it's incredible, it really is. My advocacy started when I was in middle school with, you know, bathroom bills. And there was a bill introduced and it was very generic bathroom bill. It was pretty much, you know, everyone's using the bathroom of their biological sex. It wasn't telling anyone that I was trans. And I was using the girl's bathroom. And when this bill was introduced, I was like, it's gonna out me. My dad was lobbying at the state house against it and they weren't making any progress really. It was my dad's idea to sort of bring me on board. I came up to the state house for two days and we lobbied together and we were able to defeat that bill. It sort of made me think, you know, why did I make a difference when my dad and all of these groups were already lobbying? And I think it's because it's so much easier to discriminate against and marginalize a group of people when they are nameless and they are faceless. I think being trans comes with like a kind of wisdom, I think, that comes from the the self-introspection that we all have to do. They're like, oh my gosh, oh, you're so wise for your age. No, I just had to do more like introspection and like self-discovery and, and, and self-work than most people have had to do by the time they're 60. Once we're past all that, then we're cool. Storm was like the first superhero that I was like, oh, the cape, the earrings, mm -hmm. the lightning, the hair. I was like four years old, bowl cut. Let me be this woman. <laughs> there are so many people that tell you, you don't know what you're talking about. And there are so many people that are saying, oh, you know, you're just a kid and oh, these are adult issues and you're too young to possibly understand, understand the complexities of sex and gender. And you know, that's not true. I know that's not true. We all know that's not true. We are aware of our own bodies and we are, are, are the experts on ourselves. And so don't let anybody gaslight you into thinking that you are not who you say you are.